All of us at the Dub Network and Harps Court would like to thank the crew at Herman Marshall Whiskey for being such a tremendous partner. Herman Marshall is known for their handcrafted, award-winning small batch whiskey. Whether it is their Texas bourbon, Texas rye, Texas single malt, or their blended bourbon whiskey, all of their whiskeys are built from the grain up, just like good whiskey should be. there. Welcome to uh, Harps Court. I'm your host, Derek Harper, and I have a guest coming, but brace yourself because this guest is extremely special. I've known him for a long time. I've shared so many personal moments with this guy, and it's the great Rolando Blackman. Black, I thoroughly appreciate you taking the time, man, to come on. So what's going on? Tell me what's going on with Rolando Blackman. Man, first of all, first of all, I'm glad to I'm glad to see you. I see you every dog on time. I'm looking around at the games, yeah. I'm walking around all over yes. the place and uh doing what you I do. Gotta, yeah, I'm doing what I do. And I and I just gotta ask you, man, though, how how big is your closet for all the suits you got? Oh, get out of here. That's, that's, hey, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I'm, hey, I'm, bro, I'm, listen, I'm, 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 we have about, a suit. I got about six suits and stuff. Well, I have, up I have about 22 suits, not not there a whole go. lot more, but you got to go. mix and match. You know how that goes, man. <laughs> Definitely so, man. Yeah. But you're always smooth. But listen, though, I think for, for me, the biggest piece of the puzzle is that, uh, you know, I'm still uh, working with the Mavericks. I'm vice president of uh, corporate relations. Yeah. I have, I have an opportunity to be uh, inside of the corporate, inside of the corporate structure of the Mavericks, helping Helping all the helping all the corporate side of, of what of what they do during the games, uh, the suites, yeah, the pre-game, post-game, that kind of a thing too. Uh, I, I help uh, Gail O'Bannon. I know Gail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the diversity and inclusion uh, apparatus that the Mavs have. I do community development with uh, yes. with, uh, with, with 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 Katie Edwards, and uh, just help every department that I possibly can. You know, yeah. just the, the important thing is just I'm having fun with that, and, and I'm I'm in the right place now. With that kind of a thing, and, and and really enjoying helping helping the organization that's yeah. helped me. You know, we we we've talked about that quite a bit. You and I have about life after basketball, right? And I was right, in the front right. office as well, doing some of the stuff that you you're doing right now. But mm-hmm. I, the television opportunity came, and I thoroughly wanted to do the TV part. But your journey, Ro, is different from a lot of people's journey. And you know, we talk basketball all the time. So you're in the community. You know what's going on out there. You you do different things and wear different hats. I want to talk about Rolando, the guy, where you came from. You know, born in Panama, raised in New York, in Brooklyn, New York. Talk about your journey, Ro, and how you got to where you are now, because I think it's fascinating. You know, what's what's interesting about the whole thing is that uh, my grandmother, uh, my grandmother, Zilpha Reed, came up uh, to the United States in 1959. You know, she had seven kids. Mm-hmm. And the important factor was that everybody wanted to do a, a better job of getting jobs, having the opportunity to to move forward in their lives. So from Panama, my grandmother came up here as a nurse and started putting all those pieces together. Her next son, George, came up after that, Vincent, and then and so on. And throughout that time from 1959, 1967, man, was the time for me uh, and my sister Angela a week mm-hmm. later to come to the I United know very States well. <laughs> and, and just try to and just try to get a you know it was it was just like my grandmother told me to get a better education having the opportunity to move and prosper forward in a bigger country with more opportunity and uh, from the age of four Harp I was playing soccer or kicking that ball around I thought you still thought play was, soccer <laughs> I, yeah I thought I was pretty good to kick that right. ball around but right. then I, lo and behold my man you know I got to New York City where no one was kicking any soccer balls anywhere balling they. They're all, they were, yeah, all I knew was that these guys were using their hands, which I was taught prohibitively not to use my hands in anything that I did. And now they're using their hands and they're throwing this ball into this little hole. They're right. throwing this little <laughs> ball. And I'm looking around and I, I played harp in the, in the schoolyard for two years by myself. Right. I was kicking the ball around until I got a chance to jump in a basketball game and uh, and uh, try to learn this game that everybody else is good. But it's a, it was something else. Man, I was called all kind of names. <laughs> took my like ball what? through me. <laughs> like, 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 punk, you can't play. You're a sucker. <laughs> Sit down over there. You can't, right. you, you're not a hooper going right. over there. Then, right. like in New York, they snatched my ball, pushed me out the, push me out the way. And the lucky thing for me is that I got my ball back after they left three hours later. Right. And I was able to play and try to understand what this, this new game is about. This, this thing that they're moving and they're moving all over the place. So I was, I was just lucky 
to being able to stay with it. Because for me, I just tried to do the best that I possibly could every day. Yeah. But, you know, Harp, man, I got, I, you know, I went out for basketball in the seventh grade. Uh, yeah. I got cut. This is in Panama or in Brooklyn? Oh, this is in New York City. This in Brooklyn, in New Brooklyn. York, when I came up there as an eight-year-old and four, four, five years later, you know, the, the time came when I was in junior high school, man, I was trying to go out for the team. And next thing you know, seventh grade, I got cut. Eighth grade, I got cut. Yeah. Ninth grade, I got cut. <laughs> I was I was in a serious I don't believe depression. all of that, bro, but I, I'm I was in a serious depression that whole ninth grade. I was yeah. in a serious depression. I can't remember. And then the 10th grade, I, I, I at Grady High School, I made the JV team. I, I've been to Grady, remember? You know what I mean? I made the JV team, and yeah. then, then, then from there, the whole JV team moved up to varsity. Right. So my junior and senior years, I played on the varsity team, and and, and, and at that same time, Harp, I was, I was playing tennis for my sophomore year also, too. So I was on the basketball team, and I was on the tennis team playing, playing these sports here in the United States and going to school, taking care of, taking care of business. Yeah. But it was just important to, that I met a guy by the name of Ted Gustus. Yeah, I know Ted. Who at the time taught me every day. I was, I was in the schoolyard every day at 6 o'clock and back to school and then over back back there and I played basketball seven days a, seven days a week every every day every chance I, I got to play some ball but Ted taught me the structure the movement the understanding of backdoor cutting moving picking and rolling shooting the basketball how to how to move how to get open bump and run how to put all these pieces together use of the left hand making yes. sure that I could go left just like I could go right all the little pieces of the puzzle and what I gave him was I gave him I gave him Everything I had, everything, everything, all the energy, and Ted gave it right back. Mm -hmm. So with that, I was able to, uh, I was able to grow. Uh, a harp, I was able to grow and to get better. By the time I was in the city, I was, the, you know, I was top five in New York City. By yeah. the time I was a senior, so mm -hmm. by the time I was a senior, that was a few years. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's just amazing, and it's just an opportunity to take a bite. But having somebody right next to you pushing mm -hmm. like crazy, and you yeah. pulling like crazy too. Yeah, and that's and, what's important. Yeah. Uh, listen, so we used to talk all the time as teammates. And one of the things that you always told me, which is fascinating, once again, to me, I think your story in general is fascinating, is that you were not recruited by a lot of different colleges. I could have gone anywhere coming out of high school. Not that this is about me, but I could have. Oh, yeah. You always call yourself, Ro, the best of the rest, right? Mm -hmm. All the time. You always mm -hmm. said that to me, that you weren't one of those guys that was in McDonald's All-American and all of those different things. Mm -hmm. So how did that, Ro, drive you to want to get to a level that you were 100% respected? You know, what's, you know what's up, Harp? What's lucky for me is that uh, I operated in a, in, a, in a certain level of ignorance. Right. I <laughs> operated in a certain level of I not understanding. That. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the goal. It wasn't it wasn't something that I knew about. You no, know, all America team and who's going to be this and that. All I knew was that I was trying to get better. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get better each and every day. I would play in the parks in New York City, and in playing in the park in New York City, you learn you learn quick, you learn quick what you need and what you don't have, and also when you don't have it, they tell you about it straight right. to your face. Right. They, they tell you about it. You stink. You suck. You ain't got this. You ain't got that. People are all over the place making a bunch of noise in your ear. So that that taught me a great deal also, too. I'm I'm mostly, as I was when I was younger, mostly passive in, in my way, but but intense on the court. But the idea for me was that I have the anti I have the anti trigger. You you talk trash to me, you talk trash to me, I roll up. I roll to meet the challenge. That's that that was always part of the internal process for me. You can talk all you want to, but I'm 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 gonna come out here and show you o only only to show you that you what what you're saying is wrong. And the opportunity for me was to being able to just try to be better. But I but I knew as I was going by seeing the people in front of me that hold up, I'm better. Hold up, I can do that better than. Mm -hmm. And I, and I learned that harp by the time I got to college, and I understood in those first practices like hold on a second now, this guy Mike Evans. Is the only one here that's better than? Hold, hold on a second. Hold Mike on. Mike Evans went to K State, played in yeah, Denver, to, right? Oh yes, played in Denver, yeah. and he was my. He was. I was a freshman. He was a senior, mm -hmm. all American, and boy, I tell you, the speed that I had to adhere to the the pop up jumper that he had, the the, the stoic pizza that he had, the the mentality that he had, the toughness, all those things helped me in the grind to being able to see, and then move forward, 
acquiesce to the things that were necessary to get better. So I, I always learned from the people around me, my environment, the mm -hmm. things. But but I wasn't too in tune to you know this who's going to be who's going who's going to be the this and the all American all that kinds of stuff too. Yeah. I was surprised my senior year when I you know I was like I was happy I, I made you know I made all city all New York City. That's a big deal, though. That's a big oh, deal. Oh yeah, I was all city. I, I remember I went over there, picked up this little trophy and all of that stuff. But I, all I knew was that when I got on the court, I had to show what Ted had taught me, and all the work that I do. I always come to the court, uh, Harp. I always come to the court with all the work that I put. I put in all this work, yeah. man. I'm, I'm not going, you know, your white uniform, and you going, you your moms in the stands, and your boys right, in right. the stands, and you know, I, I don't care about none of that. Right. All I care about is that. I'm, I'm going to go execute, and that's what I'm thinking about all the time. So that's that was the main factor. So 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 the little bit of the ignorance helped me a great deal early, without having all those thoughts on my head about trying to make something. I was just trying to get better and better, ravenously to to try to to try to get better on these small teams, and then all of a sudden you keep growing and growing and growing till till all of a sudden, uh, 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 you know, I mean, you're 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 one of the best in the country, man. You know, you know, I'm always starting shooting guard on the. On the 1980 Olympic basketball team, after after all this time, it was it was it was a super situation for me to keep growing mm -hmm. and keep growing under the understanding of, of being a better basketball player. Well, listen, we're, we're all doing something different. We're 60 plus years old. I'm curious to what gets you up right now. Like what what drives you? And I know you talked about what you're doing, but long term, where where does Rolando Blackman want to want to go and want to be? Well, first of all, you know, you know, Harper, I always, I always want to still be be in a place where, where, where I can help society. It's the same thing all the time. It's, uh, it's what I've done and what we've done actually all throughout our lives and careers mm -hmm. to try to try to turn around and, and help people because we have a deep understanding of coming from a, a, a disadvantaged and underprivileged background in, in that way, and really having the opportunity to turn that around to some other, to kids who don't know and give them the application of life. And having the opportunity for, for them to understand a lot more about not only going to class but also building themselves in whatever area they want to go in, and as well as sometimes teaching, teaching the game, teaching how to shoot a jumper, even when somebody's hand in your face, you 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 pop up there and bust them anyway because hand up ain't enough. <laughs> Mark Jackson says, "Hand down, man down." Right? That's his his motto I mean, when it when it comes to uh, challenging shots and things of that nature. What do you? What, what's your fondest member, memory? Beg your pardon. What's your fondest memory when you think about the Dallas Mavericks and playing for Dick Mata, uh, Elston Turner? I saw ET last week when the Timberwolves were here, or earlier this week. Beg your pardon. What do you think? If I say Dick Mata, you say what? I say I say coach and coach and mentor opened up opened up the door. For me to have an opportunity to to utilize my game taught me a lot about day to day, every day preparation, the uh, toughness that that goes along with with being consistent every day. I, I, I wanted to be there every day and making sure that every time on the court, you guys could depend on row every time that I was going to be there and be the best that I could be to be able to help the team to win. But you know, thinking about thinking about that kind of question you asking me, I'm I'm thinking about our teams, our teams that uh, had an opportunity to 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 win. I mean, we 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 were there trying to win all all throughout the time, and I can remember me, I can remember Mark Aguirre, you. Stop right I there. Remember... Stop right there, bro. Yeah. When you think Mark Aguirre, you think what? I am so curious to hear your answer. No, when I think Mark Aguirre, I think one of the baddest mugs that ever that ever played the that it's ever a played podcast. the game. You can I say, think one you of can... the baddest, one of the baddest players that's that's ever touched a basketball. Yeah. You know, I, I was I was there. I saw I saw him in the, and and I, and I, and, I, and I and I know that the players today are you know they they run around and, and talk a lot of stuff too. But, but I can remember playing in the eighties yeah. and all throughout, and and it was different. It's more physical. It's more physical. Rules it's more were different. The, the rules more were physical. Different. It's more demanding. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a much more. It's a different mindset all all the way around with the physicality in which you have to play through in order to score. And I saw this man under preparation of other teams and scouts and all that still still averaged thirty points a game on the low block outside inside passing the ball. You know he was uh, he was he was he was one he was one of the great 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 players that I've seen play in the NBA today. Period. When I, when you talk about somebody that can uh, that can play the game of basketball, so and led us, you know what I mean. He was the he was the primary scorer. 
I was the secondary scorer. I was, he was the primary primary scorer. He was the guy that the offense was what offense was built for to make sure that he got us he got us where we needed to be, and we all supported that all the way around with the plays that we had. And Mark Mark did a great job in in uh, in putting himself in that in that kind of a place to being able to to lead should our his, basketball teams his, in those winning days. Should his jersey be in the rafters at the American Airlines Center? You know, you, you have to now. When you when you ask me a question like that, now you have to ask. I, I and have know, to ask. I know you have, you have to ask, and you have to ask and understand uh, also the other the other circumstances. You're you're bringing up a thing now that that, that comes on how oh. he was here, which is a great yeah, and let, how he how he left here and all the controversy. Well, also, let's talk about in, it in, let, inside let, inside inside of, inside of all that. Yeah, because at the end of the at, at the end of the day, when you talk about those kinds of situations, you're talking about something that's really really special. In the way that, in the way that, Mark is a fantastic player, helped us to move fo forward in that kind of a way. Now, how do you deal with the tumultuousness of, how do you deal with the tumultuousness of that kind of a, of that kind of a career? How do you deal with that kind of a thing, that kind of a thing, and putting a, and putting a number up when it was all, when it was all some good and and some bad, and when you say some bad, it, it's a, it's a, it's a tough, so tough you, time, what, a tough situation. Well, well, what you're saying is that. Every jersey that's been retired, they it was because they were both great basketball players and perfect guys off the court. I, oh, definitely I not. Oh, yeah, no. I respectfully do disagree with that. Is what I was gonna say. Yeah. I, here, here's my take, and I know this is you. My take is that we were all young at the time, right? We we were very young, very we we were influenced in a different way. Dennis Rodman, first ballot Hall of Famer. The stuff that Dennis Rodman got away with through his heyday was no worse than what Mark went through. Mark was a different personality, no question about it. We agree that he was a bona fide basketball player, small forward. I, I think should be in the Hall of Fame personally, you and Mark. I think both you guys are worthy of, of that, that, uh, <clears throat> that greatness. But I think Mark was very misunderstood, and he was only 23, 24 years old. You don't know everything. We all have to grow up in life, right? And I think Mark has grown from what he was and deserves all of the accolades that we deserve. Look, Mark is a look, look, look. When, when, when you talk about all the accolades, I agree with you on that. What I, what I, you what think I Mark is a bad person? Hell no, he's not a bad person. Okay. Of course not. He's not not at all. Not at all. He's not a bad person at all. But the idea of having a, having the controversy that went through this whole situation is between is between him and Coach Mata. Right. Now, <laughs> what happens with that now is that we all have to choose what we have to go through. Yeah. Are we going to be able to? Are we going to be able to ride on and to move forward as to as to the day to day that we had? I wasn't against Mark or any any oh, anything stop. like that. My, my thing was to being able to go out there and play and be a professional each and every day. What was required to being able to get wins and to play as part of the team. I wasn't arguing with the coach and going off back and forth and this and that and the other. And and all of a sudden, also, you talk about being young. Yes, Mark was young. Of course he was young because at the end of the we day... All were. The, we all were, Black. All were young. But the idea is that the directional was to try to be a part of the, a part of the team and not be upset about things with the team when you're arguing with the coach. Well, so at every, the end of the, at, that, at the at, I think at, that's a part of it, Black. I, I really sure it is. Yeah, sure even is, more takes, so now. But it takes us. It takes. It takes for us to move forward mm -hmm. and try to get these these day to day things of a of a of a eighty two game season. Yeah, it's a hard situation to be inside of that circle because at the end of the day, what happens is that Mark has the requirements to take care of with Coach Mata. They're both going back and forth with each other as to what to do, what not to do, who's arguing about this, who's arguing about that. And we as a team now have to go down the road as to what, what are we going to do? Are we going to ride the ride the ship and move forward? Or are we going to get involved in this back and forth? And and I, and I didn't want to be involved in that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No. It's a situation where we got to go down, go down the road and try to be able to be together and try to do the things we needed to do with me, you, Dukes, uh, James Donaldson, Perfect. with with Roy, with Roy Tarpley's, with Roy Tarpley's situation, we had we had a tumultuous stuff to deal with as a team uh, mentally each and every time we were uh, out on that court. I'm going to take you back to the 94 finals when we uh, we were in New York together, you and I were, and we uh, we were facing the Rockets. 
the series went seven games, and you didn't get your opportunity role in the finals. And I know you very well. We share secrets that we'll just share between the two of us. All of us, all the time. Definitely, yes. my man. We, you're my guy. There's no question about that. However, Pat Riley chose not to give you an opportunity in the finals in 94. That left you what, bro? What, what, what were your emotions dealing with knowing with John struggling a little bit? I've talked to John. I've had him on the show before. Knowing that he was struggling and you not getting your opportunity did what to you? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep pain. Uh, it's a deep pain, even today, because you yes, know me. I do. It's a deep, it's a deep, it's a deep pain. That 40, that 40 minutes I spent in the shower after the Rockets game, oh. that game that we lost, and I went to the shower and stayed there for 40 minutes to make sure that water ran on my head, and I knew that it was over. It was done. Like, no more basketball here in New York was going to be coming forth to move forward as far as that's concerned. I love John Starks, period. Of course. Period. John is a player. John took us, John took us far with that pick and roll with him and Pat and, and also his just his just his attitude and his, his and his ability to raise the level into play he did a great job the thing for me is that I, I get disappointed sometimes in myself looking in the mirror because I'm saying how could I get to this point how can I get to this point where I have a coaching staff that doesn't trust me mm -hmm. Rolando Blackman doesn't trust me to be on the floor Mm -hmm. And and against and against the rocket team that I that you, you dominated the rocket team that you, that I saw I they, should they, have they, the they, numbers they were, they were a regular they were a regular mastercard I swiped them all the time <laughs> just, the, their backcourt whomever whomever it is that was on that was on you there all those guys. they could they could talk all they want to but they, they you understand that, that 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 when Roe played the Rockets and and had Killed the opportunity them. to it, it was it was it, I it, it was there on. I was there brother. Yeah, it was, on. Court. it was on. We're in, we're in the courthouse right now. I was there, yeah. and I swear to tell nothing but the truth. So help me God. And you were, I mean, Clyde Drexler, whoever was in a rocket uniform, you had yeah, your way Ma with them. Yeah, Maxwell, all, all those guys. Yeah, yeah. All those, all those guys. The, the important thing, the important thing for me is that I had a chance to play against the team in the finals. That I had a that had a regular that I had a regular I had great games against all the time. That yeah. they they knew and I knew from Kenny Smith all the way all the rest of them yeah. knew and understood what was happening. But at the end of the day, what was what was aggravating to me was that as 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 our guy John was struggling was to be able to give him a break from that two for eighteen. He was yeah. missing, missing, missing. Nineteen. It was and, for 19. and the idea was that I was sitting there thinking, thinking about thinking about the plays, thinking about how to react, thinking about when that call would come so that there's an opportunity to get some plays off and then an opportunity to go blow them out with some shots and yeah. put those things in the proper place. And just, just thinking, just making sure that I was stayed in the grind and stayed in the groove to help you guys. But, but the, you know, the call never came and, and that, that, that had to be the most uh, d disappointing, disappointing uh, time of my life. As far as um, I, I went, I went from the top of the food chain mm. All the way back to getting cut in the seventh grade. Oh. I went. I went all the way back, and I remember those same feelings yeah. of, of of not being included and not being a part of what was a special special time. But you know, I just I just feel bad, uh, Harp, all the time because I didn't I didn't do enough for the coaches to trust me to be on that doggone court to being able to help this team move forward and pros and prosper forward, man. It's, it's, yeah. the, it's the championship so I, state. So. My, 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 the, the question I have after you saying what you're saying, have you ever taken the opportunity to sit down with Riles and have a conversation about what you felt through the, uh, through the 94 finals against the Rockets? No, I haven't had a chance to do that. I think people think I'm mad and all that stuff too, because I remember talking one well, time. Well, you are. I mean, you're disappointed, of course. Yeah, but uh, but I remember I remember speaking. Uh, I remember speaking at uh, half court with uh, Bob McAdoo, and Bob came up and said, "Man, what's happening, Ron? I know you're still mad." I'm like, I'm look, I looked up at yeah. looked up at him. I'm so saying, it's been discussed. I'm saying I'm, <laughs> I'm saying I'm mad. I said I'm not mad at anything. I said the main factor is that the, my, that time came and went, and it had the opportunity to do that. I I look at myself because at the end of the day, I've always had myself to. To being able to hold accountable to what's happening, so I know that I didn't do enough to have them trust me and to get through him, Dick Carter, and also uh, uh, some of the other coaches. Yeah, they, you know, just Jeff trying Van, to get through, Jeff Van trying Gundy. to get through, try to get through Dick, so so Dick could feel good that I that I could play the game and all those types of things. But that's just the way it was. And the important thing is that they made that decision, 
and um you know, I just couldn't help my man because I was ready to. That was I was ready I, to. I'm, I, I'm, me, I'm I a you know a, you know a, it's a, it's an it's an all star on the court. I'm not just out there. I'm not scared of anything. Too. I'm I'm the feeder <laughs> when I get on the court. I'm the feeder. So what I'm saying. I'm I'm the one. I'm the one that dishing stuff. So at the end of the day, my mentality was still the same, ready to go to being able to help in this situation. And and the call never came. So you know, I stay I, I stay in that mode, and there's nothing I can do today. You know, I'm 63 years young, as you can see. You can see that <laughs> that face cream still working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I do know what you're saying. We definitely <laughs> took care of our skin <laughs> throughout the NBA, that right? Face cream, man. All of all of Ole. Everybody, get you a bottle. Use it twice a day. I use Jack Black myself, but there you go. There moving you right go. along. <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving right along, Black. I, we do a segment, uh, fact or fiction. On, on Harps Court. Mm -hmm. And fact or fiction, we would have won the 94 finals had you gotten your opportunity. Wow. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I would have to, I would have to, I would have to go with, uh, I would have to go with the fact uh, on that because at the end of the day, what happens is that you have a, you have a, you have a, you have a stone cold shooter and somebody, stone cold shooter and somebody that's a, that's an end game executor. People have to understand that that at the end of the games, basketball games, remember, Harp, and, and please tell them that the, the plays <laughs> were designed for, for the person to be able to make a good play. I mean, need mm -hmm. to score, make the pass, put those things together. On a day-to-day -day basis, I was entrusted by our team yeah. to being able to be the one to That's do that. That's a fact, for sure. To do that. That, that, was, that was my mindset to be ready. Here it comes. Here comes the end of the game. It's time to, to go through. So I've always stayed in that mode. And I always had the opportunity to hit shots that I hit. I mean, Harp, I, I shot 50% uh, career I in the know. 80s, baby. 50%, I know. come on, Harp. So Bro, all you the were great. I mean, I, all the, I'm Harp, not here man. to deny your greatness. I am here to allow you, you know to put light, so put light on your career. The ups, the downs, you, you were an all-star as well in the NBA. Definitely. You were at the free throw line. What year? I can't remember the year, but... You were at the free throw line at the All Star game, which people don't take as a bit as as, as serious as you guys did. Ooh, when 87. You, Ooh, 87. Yeah. I, that, it, it, Seattle. You yeah. were at the free throw line to tie or win the game. Magic, Isaiah, or Isaiah. Two uh, free throws to tie. Yep. You mm -hmm. would shoot. Take me through that, your thoughts, and all that was going on that particular uh, All Star weekend you know something after we came out of the timeout i knew that i had an opportunity from, 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 from where we broke out because magic was covered they covered everybody and at the end of the day i broke out in the sideline and got the basketball man and uh, i had larry bird in front of me and i knew one thing i didn't have much time and i could get by him easy so i went right by him with a crossover and went and i knew i didn't want to stop and try to shoot no, any pop jumper i wanted to go hard to the basket and i went hard and I went hard, and here comes Jordan, Isaiah, and some, and uh, Dominique, and, and they blasted me, hit me all over the place. At the same time, the buzzer goes off. So you know me, Harp. I'm the buzzer goes off, and there's two <laughs> free throws to go. Yeah. I immediately start to go into my bag and getting ready. My wipe my head. You can see it on the. You can see it on YouTube. Wipe my head. Yes. Get my fingers. Get my fingertips ready for these for these throws. And immediately Isaiah knows that also. He comes right up to me and starts jamming in my face about how I'm a punk, how this, you can't hit, you solve, you don't remember. This, so just trying to break my concentration. I knew it, yeah. understood that. But the idea of the whole thing, I, I told him, as you see the first one, the first one says, watch this, when I told him, when I answered him, watch this. And I didn't say anything else to him at all after that. And I got up there, man, and, and the first one, I had to get the distance, the distance, got to get the distance. Mm -hmm. And I put the ball up, here's the front rim, here's the back, and he drops in, boom, I have the distance now, just a little bit more, a little bit more arc. And I yeah. turn around and here comes Isaiah again, <laughs> going off back and forth, this and that and the other. And you know what's funny about that is that your life is on the line. You know, he may have thought it was funny, but for me, as you well know me, I'm, I am I take things more to heart. Oh, you know what course. I mean? Yes. I take things more so to heart. I'm, a, I'm, I'm different in that way. I take things more to heart because at the end of the day, my man, these guys are talking trash. Isaiah and Magic over there laughing. I hear Magic laughing. Ha, ha, ha. And Isaiah, you a punk. And he's well, covering Magic, his mouth. Magic, you a punk. And they're Magic having, they're was with fun. the West. They, Magic was yeah, they have, yeah, they're having fun over here. To my left yeah. is, is Bird, is Bird, Jordan, and, and, and Dr. J. The second free throw I was taking, Dr. J is to my left. 
doing limp wrist stuff to me. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, even Dr. J is talking trash. You got I'm in like, on it. Oh. So I just, I just, I just try to concentrate because for me, my life was on the line. You know, it's like I, I cannot it, it, harp, harp, harp. Come <laughs> I'm on, listening, now. Man. harp. I harp. You know, harp. Yeah. My heart. Come on. Yeah, I can't. I can't walk off that court with people patting me on the back. Yeah, taking by. Oh man, you could have made it. Could've. And these would be the all stars. My peers are watching. The world is watching. So I'm. I'm saying I have a choice, and I understand that. I've been here before, so this is not my first rodeo. So at the end, I get up there and I tell myself, confidence, baby, confidence. You're gonna do these. It's confidence, confidence, baby, confidence, confidence, baby, confidence, confidence. Look, uh, look at that rim. Lock in to the to, to the to, to the distance. Lock in. That's your word. Lock, lock in. in. <laughs> Just lock. Put yeah. a lock on it. Bop. Got it. Release that bad boy, and yell out, "Confidence, baby, confidence!" Yes, sir. So that that release that tension, and that ball went through the hole. Swish. It was right through. Turn around, and I had the greatest feeling ever, man. Yeah, you you go in there, you got high fives from Worthy, and 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 Cap Cap is. You know, Kareem, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, everybody yeah. to Tom Chain, everybody, all the all stars are giving you five, and now we go into overtime. Yeah. And you know, I score the first two points out of the overtime, and and we go on to win. So uh, it was it was it was really special, man. And I, and I always remember that to be able yeah. to come through. It was important. Ro, do you think you could play in this era? It's a different era. The rules are different. Could you survive in this era? Um, I think anybody in the 80s could survive in this era. I think there's a lot of people that can survive in this era. Um, not taking anything away from this era. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastically multi, multi-talented areas. Everybody has gr- grow, gone up as far as the bigs have. As far as the bigs, the bigs have gone up in being able to shoot the three, dribble yeah. the ball, do, do different actionables other than what they would normally do in tradition as a five, uh-huh. it's all gone up. It's a fantastic op- opportunity. But listen, though, when you when you, when you you take the ball to the hole and you get hand-checked, which people don't still understand what that, when you get roadblocked <laughs> on, under your wrist or when you get when you get hit and no calls are made, you got to go through that physicality to go to the bucket, right. to shoot the basketball, pop shooting, one-on-one, all those types of things. Um, could I have played in this era? Uh Easily. <laughs> so Easily. Let, let, let's have some fun, man. We played in front of the reunion rowdies, right? Back in the day. I had a little bit of hair back then. You had a <laughs> you had a head full of hair, sideburns. I'm trying to keep, trying to keep my man bad boys. <laughs> yeah, you hold it away. out. You hold it out for sure. <laughs> so if you ask the reunion rowdies about us, opposed to the MFFLs. Mm-hmm which is the guys that won the championship and just the new school of guys. How do you think we fare against the 211 championship team? I know how I feel. I want to know how Rolando Blackman feels. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, you know, it's just, a, it's just a different, it's just a different time. I think we would have won. I think we would have won the, I think we would have won the basketball game. But we would have won know, the I'm, series, seven game series. Yeah, we would have won the series. But you know, the, 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 the important thing is that all that, all that leads to, con, all that is conjecture, and people are running around saying this and that and the other. It's uh, who's the best in every era and all this kind of stuff. Who's the greatest player and all that. That that goes right in the box of all of that kind of a thing too. When you have great players like we had, also to our backcourt, there was there. There, there was there was show bar the none, show the none better than us. Show, bar none show our than picture us. at Basketball Digest. I'm sure oh, yeah. you, oh, yeah. I'm the, sure oh, yeah. you have best, that picture the best, in your the office. Best, the pe- people, were pe- people were pissed off. And, not people were pissed off. People in L.A. was pissed off. They thought the best backcourt the best backcourt in, in the league because we had the we had because we had the greatest one two punch of offense and defense and execution yeah. and having the opportunity to put those things down. But we were right up there with you can argue how you want. We were right up there with anybody. So you you couldn't name somebody that was better. And most of the time we just we just got we just got to got to get you in that kind of a way. So it was it was a big deal. Mark Aguirre was who was who was an uh, entity onto himself at that three at that three position, c- could pass the ball, shoot the ball from outside, low block kill everyone, low block kill ev- all of y'all. Don't lie. All, not some, all of y'all. So with with that whole thing, with that whole thing, being able to have that kind of stuff, James Donaldson, who don't forget, made an all-star team also too, mm-hmm. and, and being able to get that kind of stuff, Roy Tarpley, or, or you want to put put uh, 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 
um, Sam Perkins out there with that kind of a situation. Yes, and, and coming off the bench on that three-guard tandem with Brad. Brad wasn't any slouch either. That's what people forget, Brad Davis. They forget. He wasn't, a, he wasn't no slouch That's like right. you can just do what you... He wasn't no slouch. He could shoot the ball, could shoot the ball, run an offense, understood what was going on, pace, and being able to put things together. So it's just a, it's just a matter of we had a great team. Uh, and we had a great opportunity, and uh, and 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 there won't be any louder arena than reunion and reunion rowdies that was yelling and screaming all the way through. You know what I mean? That's the main factor. That's Bro, the main factor. Let me ask you this really quick, and we're running out of time. But um, greatest moment for you when it comes to basketball, because clearly basketball made us who we are, right? Oh yes. What what's your fondest memory and would you change anything about your your basketball life? Um my fondest memory was all of us playing the game together. My fondest memory was all of us winning together, really having an opportunity to put ourselves in a, in a beautiful place of growing. I loved the growth period. I loved uh, the the times of coming in then when you came in with Dale and then the team just kept getting better and better. I love the practices also too. Yeah, we used to only, kill you. We used to dominate you. Player. Yeah, you're the only player. We used to go five on five. And next thing you know, when we played against Harp on the Harp on the blue team, we knew that oh hell, <laughs> here we go up against Harp. And, I, I was and, on the second and, and team. More, then. And more likely than not, a lot a lot of those games, more, I would say, I would say a higher percentage, we lost. We lost. The starting five lost because you was on the other side. Bro, I appreciate like, you. Mark Mark Aguirre came on here and said the exact opposite. Mark came on and said that you guys won all the time. You dominated us. And I told him that was a blatant lie. And you No, that wasn't true because when you were on the other team, man, and you were going up, uh, it was that stuff wasn't funny either, too, because you wanted to be on the starting spot. Yeah. You wanted to be a starter. You you put yourself on that on that mode and and those games were that, that's what made us better also, too. Yes. Because every every practice, yes. you every practice. Every practice, instead of going back over there, Brad will guard you. Instead of you guarding Brad, you come over there and guard me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Go <laughs> I guard me. And we were we were battling back and forth. And, yeah. and believe me, Harp, when I once I got to a real game, that stuff wasn't no. I wasn't going up against a. I wasn't going up against an all pro an all pro defender in 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 the games. And it was uh, it was a serious situation. All those growth periods helped me to being able to be the best that I could be on the court because I had super players. And I looked to, to you. Because I learned from you also too. Your yeah, attitude, same. your attitude, your attitude bled over to me. Your attitude bled over to me. That no nonsense, you know, that 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 killer man, that complete killer attitude yeah. was a fantastic thing in my own elevation also too in the backcourt. I didn't have to worry about. It. I never had to look over there about somebody being worried about it. nothing. It was like Harp got that over here. We taking care of that. Mark had this, then James that. So that's that's what allowed us to to really be a great basketball team in in a, in a great team. I, I was. Hopeful. The only thing I would like is that for all of that to to last uh, another four or five years to see where yeah. we could have kept it together. Where we could have kept it together because we had a we had a great great team too. Just uh just just the volume of our spirit didn't last, and that's and that's that's the only thing I feel bad about. What's the biggest life lesson the NBA taught you? Uh, the the idea the idea that you that you that, that you fall down and get up again. That's the main thing for me. Mm. I think I think I think for me that that's what that's what that that's what that taught me i i mean i, I was i was uh at the at the bottom then at the then then coming through to the top and then going through a lot of a lot of adversity trying to help a team to to be good and winning and losing and trying to go through all the mental aspects of it and trying to go through the development of this whole situation to getting to a certain point then regressing back and then coming through again so it was it was a up and down emotional type of a situation where there's there's no word that's called steady you have to be steady yourself and bring your steadiness and, and and your consistency to the mold of what's going on because it's always always frayed to try to get that kind of stuff done. So it it, it was it, it was just the ability to bounce back, bounce back, bounce back every time, bounce back, bounce back, and keep a tough mental attitude. You taught me that that mental attitude wow. to being able to get tougher because I got tougher throughout my time. But but that's why I was able to make four All Star teams, my man. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Oh, because I had the people around, and I, and, I, and 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 people helped me. So it wasn't just me. I could I could do I could do certain things really well. But man, I got help. I got help. I was put in position to you know. Once I caught the ball, y'all know. Once I caught the ball, that that was it. So <laughs> let me catch you, done. Okay, right. that's what and 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 that's true.
Ro, listen, last last thing. Coach Mata is up in age, right? Yes. And just like me, you were drafted by the Mavericks. Uh, Rick's son, Norm Sanju, Don Carter as the owner. Um, Bob Weiss yes. was the uh, the lone assistant coach. Yes. Say, give 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 Coach Mata something that uh, that made a difference in your life in a in a nutshell. Well, what Coach Mata did for me was 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 set the set the table as to what the process is going to be. And when I say what the process is, what the attitude and the thought process is to being able to be a consistent basketball player, not only to being able to be ready in your craft and, and watching tape, understanding the different variables of teams and plays and players, which I got into as I was a pro, but also to have the proper attitude when I'm tired, when I don't feel so good as to playing, to being able to the psychological pieces of looking at a team and, and drumming up something that would infuse the fire inside of my brain, even though it was the fourth game in five nights, being able to being able to come out there and be consistent. Without that, I wouldn't have been able to be up there shooting 50% and being up there hitting shots all the time. Because at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta have a high level grind. It's not just a grind for all of us. You gotta stay in the high level in order to be able to be able to do the things that you need to do to help your team win. And that's that's what he taught. That's what he taught me as the time goes on with that kind of a thing. And really, at the end of the day, he helped me also to grow tougher from staying away from the from all the morass, all the garbage, because we had a lot of it with our team. You know what I mean? Where, where we had we had a lot of extra stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Dealing with people's attitudes and also Coach Mata's attitudes. You know, he was he wasn't he wasn't one of the guys, the friendliest guys, <laughs> but for but for a lot of people. It was different. And yeah, he simple. was different in that yeah. kind of a way. He was tough to play for. It's not an easy coach to play for. But uh, like like anything for me, I just took stuck to my lane, stuck to the things that I know that I needed to get accomplished, and. Uh, it worked out for me in that in that in that essence too. I, I wish that it had worked out in, in a way where our team could have stayed together because we had a we we had a popping team yeah. and uh, one that one that could have done a lot of things. But that's 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 just the way that goes. And it was that that's my biggest disappointment. Stay with me, bro. Listen, Kyrie Irving does he work with Luka Doncic? I think I think at the end of the day they'll work. Uh, I don't have any issues or any pro problems with having great great star players in the backcourt that can play. What's important about this whole thing is to being able to understand for them when, when the end of the basketball game comes, to being able to see who's going to take it that game, who's going to do what, make sure you have that stuff down and directed as, uh, as the, at the end of the game. And the rest of the players also, too, those things have to come up as far as that's concerned. Who's going to be playing at uh, center? Is, is Wood going to play a lot more? Because he can score. He can, he can distend the defense. But no matter where he is, you can't just leave him, and that creates more space. And that uh, and that we need other other players also too to be able to be strike force guys when they get that ball because when they get that ball they're going to be getting the ball on the rotation with a defender not there or running at them and that's an open opportunity to being able to get it done those two guys work the important factor now is that do they want to make it a long term thing does uh -huh. Kyrie want to make it a long term does he want to do that well we'll see because we we don't know what's what's uh, going on in his interior and I'll. And I'll beg to differ or, or, or tell somebody that they know what's happening because they don't. So at the end of the day, we'll see what happens at the end of the season, how he feels, how this thing has gone, and, and see if we can build something real special. 2023 basketball opposed to when we were in the league in the 80s and the 90s. What's the biggest difference to you? Well, to me, to me, I think, think the level of talent, uh, the level of talent of, of the players, how, how I, think that's, I think that's come up amongst the bigs. Not amongst the guards. The guards could always play. So it's not like they, they could always live, dribble left, right, shoot the basketball. But now bigs are doing that. Bigs are playing a kind mm. of a backcourt position, shooting would, would threes. You, Ro, would you see would you say Dirk changed that narrative? Dirk, 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 Dirk obliterated that whole thing. Dirk yeah. is a bad boy. I mean, yes, sir. A, I had a chance to I had a chance to be around Dirk and coach uh be around Dirk when I when I came on the team in 2000. Yeah. And saw Dirk uh saw Dirk grow, I had a chance to be around Steve Nash and watch those guys grow. But Dirk was uh Dirk was a big, big game changer. The thing about it is that I remember now, I'm a student of the game now, so I remember I, I remember the I remember the Rick Barry's. You know, he he reminded me for, for, from his elder, the person that came before was a guy like Rick Barry. Rick yeah. Barry was like Rick Barry Greatness. was like that. Chain, no oh question. man, Greatness. shooting the ball, shoot you down, dribble, dribble to the, the basket, take, make moves and, and pass the ball. I mean, it was a fantastic opportunity to see a big 
take over, take over as a small would. And uh, and Dirk was just unstoppable once he got the ball in this position, and his and his focus, concentration, and technique was bar none. You could, Burke is one of those guys that I always talk about. A hand up ain't enough. Right. Just because you had your hand up, don't mean nothing. Right. And that's what exactly what he still put that ball up on that arc. Yeah. And still bust you. I mean, I mean, how do you score thirty one thousand points? Yeah. It's you, I mean, those, those scouting directors know that stuff didn't work. Yeah. They, they went all them scouting shit, put that on the board, and Dirk still was was. Uh, you know, MVP, a fantastic player. Glad, glad to have been around him. Yeah. Uh, Fif- privilege. Now, fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. What do you feel about load management, guys? Yeah, not- I, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of load management whatsoever. I'm, I think that the fans lose for for those kinds of situations, and 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 I know the dichotomy between that and paying the guys a whole lot of dollars, and you want them to be on the floor, and you want them to be able to be healthy for the run that you paid them for. You paid them to try to get you the championship. So mm-hmm. today is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, fans come to see you play. And the opportunity to be out there is very, very important to be able to go out there and to play the games that you're getting paid for. You're getting paid to be 82 games. So come out there and play. I was tired many, many games, many games I was tired. But those two and a half hours, man, you came out and gave it gave it all you have and uh, put your work in and do the things that are so... I'm not a, you know, a fan of load management. If, you, if, you're t- if you're hurt, you're hurt. But not because you're playing the game and you play three or five and, and, you're, t- you're, and you're tired. Man... Get out there and play, man. The first and the fifteenth, you're not missing your checks, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> man, you don't you don't know how much I appreciate you, bro. We talk uh all the time. We we don't talk all the time, but, no, man, but we're so connected. we're so connected. We we've I'm spent like t- so many hours and days at under, a time. Un, under 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 good times and bad and under absolutely, direct, absolutely, and, under, and always under care. You know, which yeah. is uh, which is very very important, man. Very yeah. important. To, to so be, I, I am simply honored, man, that you would come on and, and hang out with me for a little while, and I appreciate your time. I'll see you soon. Much success to you, my man. Continue success. Take good care. Okay, black. Peace all the time. Bye bye now. Bye bye.